Carney, the uh, Chamber President, we welcome you to the 2020 Candidate Forum. We want to thank the Apple Valley Chamber of Commerce Board, Bogarts, our gracious hosts, the City of Apple Valley for TV coverage beginning this weekend, Speed Pro Signs, and most of all, our candidates for their public service wanting to improve Apple Valley and Dakota County. It is my honor to introduce Scott Catterlick, local CPA. Good morning. Good morning. It is great to be here. This is the 2020 Candidate Forum here in Apple Valley. Um, today we have with us the commissioner race. Um, currently, the commissioner is Chris Gerlach of District 7. His opponent for the upcoming campaign is Mayor Mary Heyman Rowland from Apple Valley. I'd like to welcome you both here. Uh, I am your moderator. I am a CPA. I am a former chair of the Federal, or <laughs> the Federal Reserve Board. No, I'm a former chair of the Apple Valley Chamber of, of Commerce. I have to tell you, um, I am not part of the media. Um, this will go very smoothly and, and easily. Uh, I am a resident of Apple Valley. I am married. I have two children and, gr and three grandchildren that have attended Apple Valley schools. I'm a former chair of the Apple Valley Chamber of Commerce. I'm a business owner, I'm a taxpayer, and I vote. We are gonna take a little time just to go through the ground rules. Each of you will be given one minute to introduce yourself to the residents of Apple Valley and Rosemount. Then I will ask each of you a question. You will have one minute to respond to all of the questions that you're asked. Um, you'll be given probably two, maybe three questions along the way. The um, questions may be different between the two of you, so I may not ask the same question to both of you. Each of you will be given an opportunity after that to ask each other a question. You will also be given one minute to respond to those questions. If you don't answer any of my questions, I will interrupt you and ask them again. You will not be given additional time and you will be held to the one minute time period. Tasha will be monitoring the time and um, we'll inform you when there's 15 seconds left. So let's begin. Commissioner Gerlach, you have one minute and an opening statement for the residents of Apple Valley and Rosemount. Well, well thank you, first of all, to, uh, to, to Scott and, and to Tasha and the Apple Valley Chamber for hosting this. I'm a lifelong resident of Apple Valley, graduate of Apple Valley High School, uh, College of St. Thomas, Air Force ROTC, and I spent a few years in the Air Force as a crew commander for the uh, Minuteman II nuclear missiles. Uh, I moved back to Minnesota, back to Apple Valley, because I love it here. I've served some years in the Minnesota House of Representatives in the State Senate and for two terms on the county board. I've learned that politics is not just about process or policy or even elections. It's always about people and their daily struggles. And I've always tried to keep that uh, in mind and understand that. And uh, the reason that I want to continue on is I want to continue to have a positive impact on people's daily lives. Um, I'd, uh, I'd appreciate your support in re-election in this coming election, so thank you. Great, thank you, Chris. Mayor Mary Hyman Rowland, Roll I apologize for that. Please give us your opening statement. Well, first of all, I wear my mask for you because I care about you. And I wanna thank our viewing audience, and I wanna thank Bogarts and President Ed Carney and Chairwoman Tasha Wells and Fabiana for creating this safe platform for civic engagement. My name is Mary Heyman Rowland, and I'm a resilient, proven leader with proven results, leading Apple Valley as mayor for 21 years to one of Money Magazine's best cities in America, achieving two AAA bond ratings, creating a complete street and utility reconstruction with no assessments, and the lowest per capita spending for Dakota County's largest cities. We invest in what we value, and I am actively engaged as a chamber member and the president of a, a variety of civic organizations. Please go to maryhamanruland.org to learn more about me, me, and thank you for your vote. Thank you, Mayor Mary. County Commissioner Chris Gerlach, you represent District 7, which includes Apple Valley and a portion of Rosemount. What issues affecting District 7 have you worked on recently? Uh, most recently, 
our transit has, has had a, a problem. The Metropolitan Council has, has uh, declared their takeover of the red line, the operations of the red line, um, within their rights through contracting, but with little public policy engagement. And uh, our uh, uh, Minnesota Valley Transit Authority Board, uh, chaired by Clint uh, Hoopa, uh, and uh, ex our executive director, Luther Winder, have been working tirelessly um, along with the board in trying to uh, advocate and get some, some local governing input uh, on that decision. That has just cropped up the last couple of, of, uh, um, couple of, uh, of, of weeks. Uh, we've got one minute, it's tough to, to go down a list, but that, uh, that's the most recent. Mayor Mary Heyman Rowland. Chris made a comment about the Met Council. Do you believe the Met Council has the best interests of Dakota County in mind when they design their strategies? Well, um, thank you for that, uh, that question, Scott. We know that the issue that uh, Chris was talking about was MVTA and the operation of the red line. And I am committed to our MVTA, which we have had for 30 years. The Metropolitan Council has got this one wrong, but they don't get everything wrong. I'm all about continuous improvement, and I believe it's important for us as leaders to make sure that we work with our partners, like our uh, mayor who is here today from Rosemount. He is uh, Bill Drosty, and we work together on that MVTA. So working together, assuring that we have a region that is robust, vital, and an economic powerhouse is what we need to do, and that's what the Metropolitan Council needs to support us and help us do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Gerlach, the demographics of the county are changing. What is being done to accommodate the new residents and provide opportunities for work, housing, internet speeds, and the transfer of, of goods and services through our community? Well, you're, you're exactly right on the demographic changes. Uh, the, the county is, is growing multidimensionally. It's uh, both demographically as far as uh, race and immigrants as well as age. Uh, and there's a lot being done on, on all of those. There's, there's um, within our social services and community services department, we have all sorts of programs going on that, uh, um, are, that are, are designed to keep people uh, in place. People want to, they don't want to have to be forced to move away from their, their families because they need a, a nursing home or assisted living in some faraway place. Instead, um, we, we've got programs designed to keep people in place uh, as long as possible in the community. Uh, there's, uh, of course, uh, if we've learned nothing uh, in uh, th these last few months regarding public safety and race relations, it's that, uh, um, that exclusion breeds contempt, and you have to make every effort possible to involve all people in all aspects of, of our, our society uh, in order to, to uh, uh, get full participation. Thank you, Commissioner Gerlach. Mayor Mary. What do you feel the biggest issue in District 7 is today? Well, you know, the big, biggest issue, issue in District 7 is the biggest issue in the entire world. It's the pandemic. And the pandemic has influenced many different things. And in fact, it's revealed to me why it's important for me to be your next commissioner. We have seen the civil unrest. And unfortunate, it's be, because those who are, um, who, who have already been challenged enough have found themselves with the pandemic being challenged even more. And that's very, very disconcerting. Also, um, our broadband uh, was one of the things that you brought up. That's something that I want to work on. We have had challenges with broadband and we have an opportunity here. And the opportunity is to be able to give you faster, more reliable speed by a private-public partnership, and I'd like to help work on that. And those are just a couple. Great. Thank you very much. Commissioner Gerlach, the county collects property taxes from our residents and businesses. They spend these dollars and allocate taxes to the cities. As a commissioner, you hold a lot of power. Are we getting the best bang for our buck in Dakota County? 
Uh, I think you are. I think you are, Scott. Uh, there's a lot of good news and good things to say about the budget and taxes uh, with regards to Dakota County and also the cities within Dakota County. Uh, one thing I've learned, uh, at the, if you compare the state and federal budget situation with local governments, there's no comparison. The local governments have much better control over what's going on. They're closer to what's happening, and you get the far better value. Dakota County has had the lowest per capita property tax rate of all 87 counties, number one out of 87. We've, we've maintained this for years. We just set our max levy at zero. We just did that a couple of weeks ago. That's uh, to take into consideration the economic situation that we, we're facing. Uh, you know, once this public health crisis uh, is, is over, we're going to be facing a long-term economic crisis, and we need to be prepared for that. Uh, and uh, you can't just get by on the cheap either. You have to deliver the services. And whether it's roads, libraries, parks, Dakota County has done very well in all those areas. Thank you very much. Mayor Mary, the Minnesota Zoo is part of District 7. 1.2 million visitors each year travel through the zoo. The impact on the local economy is $140 million. What do you plan to do to remind legislators in St. Paul that the zoo is an important asset to Minnesota and Apple Valley? Well, it's not what we did, uh, are going to do, it's what we just did. And I want to thank Senator Claussen, who's walking in right now, and our uh, legislators for helping lift the zoo. We were on the phone, we were um, doing letters to the governor to share how important the Minnesota is to our economy. And I'm very happy to tell our viewing audience and the people that are here, thank you. Thank you for reaching out to the governor. Thank you for reaching out to the legis uh, legislators. Thank you legislators for helping lift the Minnesota Zoo. We will now be able to continue to have the Minnesota Zoo and in the future you will see the new treetop trail. It could have cost us $30 million to get rid of that infrastructure. It's going to cost us $11 million to have a landmark, um, a landmark feature that will bring people from all over the world once this pandemic is over. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Mary. This portion of the, the debate is a little different than, than you've probably gone through in all of your campaigning. You now get to e ask each other a question. You have one minute to ask the question. You have one minute to respond. We're going to start with Commissioner Gerlach. Please ask Mayor Mary a question regarding the, well, the upcoming uh, race. Sure. Um, you know, one of the uh, items that, uh, well, we agree on a whole lot of things. And, uh, I, you know, in trying to figure out, okay, where is something we disagree on? And we touched on it, and that was the, the Met Council. And although we do agree that the Met Council has, uh, has done a lot of good with regards to planning, coordination, and in many respects, operational things, but one of the problems is that it's in the policymaking arena now. And uh, it's self-proclaimed policymaking has reduced our local elect officials to nothing more than an advisory role. Uh, and, and that's a real problem. And I've been very vocal and outspoken over the last few years that this governance structure needs to change and not just nibbling around the edges with um, some internal changes like, like uh, staggered terms or, or uh, advising on the nomination process, but real reform and meaningful reform to have local elected officials have an impact on the policymaking of our regional governance. What is that's your, something we've what differed is your question? on. So the question is, how um, um, is your position the same on that as it has been in the years because we've differed, or um, are you uh, um, along the uh, uh, lines of, of recognizing a need for significant reform? That was a long question, it was. Chris. <laughs> and I apologize. Yeah, it was probably more than a minute question, but I serve on the Transportation Advisory Board and I am the vice chair of it. And it is our responsibility to continue to make continuous improvement. Also, your uh, fellow, and I hope my fellow uh, um, county commissioner, Mary Liz Holberg, is in the Blue Ribbon Commission, along with Mayor Couts from Burnsville and several other mayors who are looking at that issue right now. So thank you for that question. I do believe that the Metropolitan Council, like every organization, for our future needs continuous improvement. So whether it's staggered terms or how we establish that, it will be up to that Blue Ribbon Committee to advise and to be able to share with us how those improvements are going to be made. And we can work with the Metropolitan Council. We don't want to throw the baby 
out with the bathwater. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Mary. So, Commissioner, you used to live in the neighborhood on County Road 42, and you know how heavy the traffic can be on this road. And children need to cross that road to and from school. You were invited to a city county meeting on the County Road 42 intersections for safety and accessibility to preserve the neighborhood, but unfortunately you couldn't be there. How well have you represented the neighborhoods in your district and what will you do to ensure that those neighborhoods remain intact? Well, pedestrian safety is very important. In fact, as you said, I, I've, I've lived right on County Road 42. You used and, to live and, there? Uh, yes, I used to live mm -hmm. there, right there on County Road 42. And it, it is a big issue. In fact, we have, uh, we've halted uh, the county, we've halted our engineers from, from removing stoplights or making some changes until we do a full pedestrian safety study along with the traffic studies and with, with, the, with the cars and automobiles and the, and the trucks and such to make sure that these are integrated and as safe as possible. There's lots and lots of public uh, uh, meetings, lots of opportunities for for citizens to weigh in, for public officials to engage, uh, and uh, and we have both done a lot of this, and we're both well versed in a lot of those uh, in a lot of those issues. And uh, the good news is is that the city and the county and the neighborhoods are all working together to come up with some viable solutions to make sure that we have safe neighborhoods and that they do remain in as intact as possible. Thank you, Commissioner Gerlach. We are now at a point where we are going to issue our closing statements. I will begin with Commissioner Chris Gerlach. You have one minute to talk to the citizens and residents of Apple Valley. Thank you. Again, you know, I think Dakota County, when compared to all the other, well, actually, I'll just say all local government. Again, I will include cities. Cities and, and, and counties um, are really where the action happens. And our Dakota County and our city of Apple Valley are all very well managed. They're on the right track. Dakota County is on the right track. I chair our community development agency, which is the economic development housing arm of Dakota County. And uh, we have done more on affordable housing than uh, our comparative uh, metropolitan counties or other counties around the state to address that problem. Uh, Transportation-wise, a controversial thing we did a few years ago was uh, advocating the dissolution of the county's transit improvement board to make sure that those tax dollars came locally and could be used flexibly for a range of transportation and transit options here. And we've done that successfully, and that has proven very good. We're on the right track. We want to continue on that right track. And I would appreciate uh, your vote and, and confidence in, in continuing to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gerlach. Mayor Mary Heyman Rowland, your final notes. As your county commissioner, I'm ready to champion parks, trails, open spaces to support our well being. The pandemic has shown us how important nature is for our relief. Prioritize people focused transportation for safe pedestrian bike trails. Support business expansion for growth in a safe, healthy, county and promote critical skill training for future workforce. Explore economical broadband development through private part, public partnerships, faster, reliable teleeducation, telemedicine, telebusiness, home internet, and strengthen our city county partnership. Please vote for me, Mary Heyman Rowland, for Dakota County Commissioner District 7 and go to maryheymanroland.org and thank you for your vote and thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for this excellent debate. Thank you to the Apple Valley Chamber of Commerce for providing voters with additional insight, Bogarts again for hosting, the City of Apple Valley for filming, mostly our candidates for their public service, and I want to remind everybody that each race is being filmed separately as its own TV show. And I again want to thank you for listening.